actually here's what we're trying to achieve here. It's a handy little book to have on hand. We're uh, looking at the wall abutment squeeze fold, buttoner style. You can see that basically good. Um, the wall transits or the roof trans transitions to the wall here uh, with a continuous seam. Layouts given here. It's actually a really good book. Um, female seam, male seam layout. Uh, some small well, text for the folds, the process of the fold, and then the uh, the development of the fold in picture form, which is something that I can really appreciate. So basically, we're trying to achieve this up the wall. It's a folding technique that allows us to. Uh, transition the panel up the wall without notching the seam and what you'll have is a, a continuous panel even at the intersection here throughout the joint it's a continuous panel just folded in on itself so we're gonna lay that out now I laid out on a on a flat surface first um, hopefully I can get it in the frame here so we have uh, the inch and a half and male lots right there hmm. this line is going to be just for layout purposes what we're going to do is get the layout first and then we're going to transfer our layout to the seams. Basically, we can take that pattern and uh, the pattern we develop from here, we can take it to every panel we do, uh, every wall transition panel we do. We just take that pattern and move it on to the next one. Okay, so then, so this would be the male edge, or uh, so this is call this the roof region call this the wall abutment so this area if you can imagine if we fold this up this male edge gets folded up we would have the roof area below and the wall above that's how that that's how we're laying it out so then I'll just move uh, Yeah. Um. Creating the female. Yeah. Top of the female and the fold over. And then we'll just do an inch and a half out for the upstand. So then, so this would be male. This would be female. Inch and a half upstand. Top leg fold over. Uh, Predetermining your bends with layout is going to give you the cleanest end result. Getting this right the first time is very important. If your bends aren't right, you're gonna you're gonna pre-fold it here. You're gonna take it up on the roof. If it's incorrect, you're gonna have to unbend it and rebend it, and uh, you don't get that chance. It will uh, zinc and aluminum will crack and uh, steel. You you might get away with it one time, but um, depending on what grade of steel you're using, it's it's gonna crack as well. Create a hole. A weak point right, is in here. It is right in this in this corner. Um, you know, if you have to unbend it, rebend it, this will open up. This will split open in this point right here. Okay, so 
that's the importance of getting this right the first time. So this is why we have to lay things out. If we know how to lay it out based off of uh, roof geometry, uh, it's going to go very smoothly. So um, we have a layout here. This, this tells us how to lay things out. So So, what we're going to want to do is um, we have to, you have to go up there, find the roof pitch. I just use a normal angle finder. So, this is uh, basically the roof to wall transition angle. Okay, so now that we have our seams laid out, um, I like to mark things up. So, this would be the so if, this, if you imagine this panel being folded up, this is the wall, this is the roof. So I mark it wall abutment, roof, region, and then we're going to mark this line as well, upfolding line, okay? And uh, male seam, female seam. It's like so. We take the entire height of the seam, which is uh, inch and 11 sixteenths, transfer that going up the wall. Mark that. Okay. And from there, we will take the uh, our the, the the wall pitch angle, the roof to wall pitch angle that we got right from the roof, and basically line that up with that intersection just made. Make a line. So we can mark that up as roof pitch. Pitch. Same as on the other side. We'll take the height of the seam, entire allowance of the seam. Yeah. And mark up the wall right there. Double check. I recommend redrawing it. Okay, so there's our line, our uh, roof pitch. Roof pitch. So from that line, we're going to mark. So basically, we're keeping the same seam height. We're going to transfer that up here, and then from there, we're bisecting. Right there. So, just go over that again, seam height, transfer it up here, where that intersects, sorry, seam height, draw the roof pitch line, and from the roof pitch line, we're going to, on that roof pitch line, we're going to take that seam, same seam height, and mark it down here, and do that over here, So we have an intersection, the seam heights on that roof pitch line, right there. And so now, that's how we're developing. So basically what we have to do is create a fold, uh, a fold line to tell the metal where we want it to bend in order for it to line up with the bottom. We're basically matching up these seams uh, on the upstand. So now what we do is, so it's making sense. We're taking... So this point right here, this point, roof region, wall abutment, up fold line going up the wall like that. We kind of hold it here like this. So we're basically trying to do what we see in the picture here. And this point right here represents this point right here. And as you can see from that point, from this point here, you can see that there's a, a fold line right coming right out. It's a, Call it a miter line, but it is a fold line, that, or a miter line that we're going to fold on. So, starting with a flat piece of metal, we have to find this line using this technique. So, like I said, what we've done so far is going to help us find that line. So, 
we've now bisected it, it's gonna, we're gonna basically draw this line across to achieve our fold line, right? But there's one thing we have to uh, remember when doing this, it's, a, it's just an important rule right across the board, is for the male side, we have to draw, we have to increase the, uh, we go, so here is the theoretical on paper miter line. So mathematically that's where, but for, uh, for fabrication purposes, what we're going to want to do is, so here is, here is the initial line so here. We want to, on, on the male side, we want to bump that up two mil, two millimeter or about an eighth of an inch, let just less than an eighth of an inch. So, so if we, let's, let's just make that line in there. I'll make it a light line so I don't get the two confused. Okay, so this is the theoretical, this is the theoretical fold line. For fabrication purposes, we bump up the male side and bring down the female side. So we, incre we increase this by two millimeter from this point out, swing it two millimeter. And with this one, I'm just going to draw it in now too. But on this side, instead of going up, we're bringing it down two millimeters. Okay. Now, these are our fold lines. The rest of it is fairly simple, but Establishing these fold lines is key to a quality end result, especially when you're dealing with pre-painted products like, such as steel, aluminum, and zinc that, um, like I stated before, would have a hard time being unbent and rebent without compromising the, um, the integrity of the material. So. This is, this is how we establish those lines. We're going to move into um, putting them on the panel now. Okay. Now, first thing I like to do is just set my Wuko. You guys left me with the the premium the premium wuko it's got this really cool knob you see this knob it's uh see this knob here see how i gotta tighten it with a pair of pliers that that's what makes it so cool just kidding hate it so much all right so i got the wuko set off of this little pro tip don't uh you know, Wuko's got Wuko's got these marks along here to signify, you know, depth. Um, those lines have let me down before. Pro tip: make your line and set your Wuko to that line. It'll never let you down. Okay, so Wuko set, and now we're going to start forming. And forming, we have some specialty tools, a couple different tools. My favorites are these two for making bread pans, they're, uh, or uh, sorry, pocket folds here. This guy here, a lot, of, a lot of squishing power. This is this edge here, and I also use this edge here. This one, uh, these are... Uh, pocket folders they will they basically help me adjust when I need to let's see them in action you can you can figure out folding line here right there uh, this is going to be bent this is the the upstand that goes up the wall this is the roof area Basically, we're, we're, we're bringing this down, or bringing it up, but we're bending it this way. So, if the water's, water's draining down the roof from this point here, 
this one has to overlap onto that one and the the most important thing we can we have to remember here is um, The most important thing we have to remember here is which way to send the bend. So we want to we want to send this bend that way. And at the, these 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 folders are nice because what's going to happen is is we're going to bend in this way, and then this one's going to bend out at the same time. That's why I like these so much. So, see that. It starts to crease here, but at the same time, the folders are are pulling out that side as well. So it's really nice. Do the same thing for the other side. It's the bread pan. Uh, it's a creasing tool. So I'll show you why these uh, why these folders are so nice. Or sorry, these needle nose are so nice. So you see, my bend started to get away on me with these ones. So I had to stay on that line there, and it started to go off on me. So. Now this one, this is an inward bend, this is going to be an outward bend, but in order to, and the outward bend has to be on that line, otherwise it's not going to end up so nice. So I'm just going to basically tell this, tell this bend where to go, <laughs> basically. Get that crease out of there. So actually I could leave it like that. No. Let's get this. I want that I want it to bend right on that fold. So what I'm doing is I'm I'm grabbing it and I'm twisting the pliers. See that? You see how the, the metal wants to go? But I've basically, I'm controlling my bend uh, with these tools, which basically help me achieve exactly what I want. And then we're going to bring this one in a little. Like that. There we go. Okay. So I'm starting these bends where I want them to go. I'm, right, I'm staying on my lines. It's very important to stay on those lines. So now that I've started that, basically creased it to start it. Now that it's started, I'm gonna take my Wuko that I had set already. And I'm gonna Get a nice crease here. So you can see I've creased it with the Wuko. And now all we're gonna do now that we have these folds here like this. See that? All I'm gonna do now. Alright, so what what really helps is folding these over. Making sure you can see. Staying on my folds, very important. Maintaining the fold lines, so you can see that. But also maintain the angles of the seams. Okay, keeping that flat. 
and that metal just that metal will just follow that lighter line just so so i'm just going to follow it up follow it up back to the loophole We're staying on our lines, it's gonna turn out nice. So, so far. Now this is the this is the area. This is the part of the uh, the uh, the job where um, you can send it up to the roof. Get us a little closer. Now, this is what gets sent up to the roof. What you can do so with the layout, we've achieved everything up to this point now there we go. much better that's exactly how we want it these these pliers come in handy basically it helps you manipulate manipulate the the steel that's where you want it now and kind of squeeze these a little bit just to help help things along. Um, we can now dial these down again. This is what gets sent up to the roof. Right, everything back in line. We got our sorry, all. everything back in line now. And uh, next, we'll be showing how we seam them together. Now, this is going to go up. bottom and my panels are nice goes right into the right into the press there so I'm gonna put a clamp on it yeah. See how 
things are starting to take shape. Maybe take some more material out here. Now, if, if any of these bends were wrong, you could see how difficult it would be to uh, how difficult it would be to undo it. How difficult it would be to undo it, rebend, and you know restart. You basically starting all starting from scratch because uh, you know the metal would get quite compromised due to the you know the manipulation back and forth. So establishing a good layout is key. Just double fold it in here. Okay, get that started. Okay. Now I don't know if you guys can tell, but we're at that stage where we can and bring this back. Start to see how things are going in the corner there. It's folded along that line, making things fit better nice. So hopefully you guys can still see that. I'm gonna start finishing this. We can get our trusty uh It is 24 gauge, and uh, everyone else on that goes. So I'm gonna I urge you guys to, you know, practice. I'm still practicing myself. It's not something I was taught in my apprenticeship, unfortunately. They don't touch on this stuff in in normal trade school in North America. Well, can't say North America. There are places that do. Just uh, nowhere nowhere near me. So I'm trying to bring some life back to our trade. These videos are geared towards that. Uh, so hard with no real recognition because there's a and also too though is not only working hard but um, you know charging actually it's it's most apparent in in owning owning a metal roofing business because uh, First of all, the amount of skilled workers and uh, the amount of skilled workers that are out there and lack of interest in the, in the trade. So, um, you know, part of this, part of, uh, 
part of the, the purpose of this channel is to try and revamp, you know. The trade needs an overhaul. That's what we're doing. Okay, so what I wanted to show you was what it did here so far. We're basically at the single box stage. And we're going to turn things over and then double fold them now. Um, I made that notch. Oh, sorry. There it is. I made this notch here. You can see, you know, trying to turn uh, four layers of 24 gauge metal would have been a little tricky. Okay, so. stage hang this on there come in with the, with the double lock double folder there we go all right there we go now I got a couple nicks here and there but nothing really to be ashamed of uh, you know, it's only going to get better with more and more practice, but it's 24 gauge steel pre-painted and we have barely any scuffs, I think due to proper layout uh, on the bench. And like I was showing you before, you know, we had laid this out on the bench and sent it up and we can, um, we can increase production that way. You know, and while I was doing what we've seen here, we could have had another guy doing this same thing. And then, uh, sorry, getting the next panel ready. And I could just, you know, roughly in the same amount of time, you can be ready to go with that. I'm done this and we can just piggyback uh, back and forth. So I think there's uh, there's definitely something to be said about this uh, being a, a legitimate uh, a legitimate trade in, in North America we I think a lot of guys get afraid of it because it is uh, it is time-consuming uh, on the onset but you know just like anything you keep doing it you're gonna get better so you know refer to this video for uh you know for more uh more and more um details like this double double folded details like this and you know we can only practice and get better so thanks for watching